Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice, where we take up the questions from the Hindu and Indian Express and curate them as per the demands of Civil Services Prelims Examination. The questions for the discussion are listed on your screen. Moving on to the first article of the day that has appeared on Indian Express under the explain section basically talks about the ozone hole and its depletion. Now the article says that as per the new assessment, ozone layer will recover to 1980 values by 2066 over Antarctica and in Arctic by 2045. It also praises the success of Montreal Protocol and highlights that the phasing out of greenhouse gases will be more difficult task to be obtained. Now UPSC in the previous year under the environment section has continuously asked questions related to various environmental phenomena and thus this topic becomes important for us as a question related to climate change, greenhouse gases, ozone hole can very well be asked in the UPSC prelims examination. As UPSC in 2017 has also asked about one of the initiatives and the pollutants regarding climate and clean air correlation. A practice question in this regard says, with reference to the ozone depletion, consider the following statement. The first statement here is, the depletion of ozone is more pronounced in the South Pole. Now this statement is correct, as the ozone depleting substance are present throughout the stratospheric ozone. The severe depletion of Antarctic zone known as the ozone hole occur because of the special atmospheric and the chemical condition that is present at the Southern Pole. The very low winter temperatures in the Antarctic stratosphere cause polar stratospheric clouds to form. And the special reaction that occur on the polar stratospheric cloud combined with the isolation of the air allow chlorine and bromine reactions to produce the ozone hole in, in Antarctic. So statement 1 here is correct. Moving on to the second statement, it says Vienna Convention is legally binding agreement requiring countries to phase out ozone depleting substances. Now this statement is incorrect. Vienna Convention was adopted in the year 1985 and entered into force in the year 1988. It acts as a framework for international efforts to protect the ozone layer. However, it is not legally binding and does not introduce legally binding reduction goals for the use of chlorofluorocarbons. Moving on to the next statement, it says Kigali amendment to Vienna Convention was made to phase down hydrofluorocarbons. Now this statement is again incorrect. The Kigali amendment was made to the Montreal Protocol. Again a thing about the Montreal Protocol is that it was the Montreal Protocol which for the first time set binding progressive phase out obligations for developed as well as the developing countries for all the major ozone depleting substances. Kigali amendment was made to the same Montreal Protocol and aims for phase down of hydrofluorocarbons. Further, the hydrofluorocarbons are currently used as a replacement of hydrochlorofluorocarbons and the chlorofluorocarbons or the CFCs in the air conditioning, refrigeration and foam insulation. However, they also act as a powerful greenhouse gases and thus Kigali amendment talks about phasing out hydrofluorocarbons. The question further says which of the statement given above is or are correct and as only statement 1 is correct, the correct option for the given question will be option A. Further, the correct option for the previous year question is option B. Moving on to the next article of the day that has appeared on page 17 of the Indian Express basically talks about the National Clean Air Program. The article says that the Delhi continued to be the most polluting city in the country in the 2022 but says that it has fared better as compared to the 2019. The article further says that the national capital on an average recorded PM 2.5 concentration at around 99.7 microgram which was much above the Central Pollution Control Board standard of 40 microgram per cubic meter of air. Further, it says the analysis was released to mark the four years of the launch of National Clean Air Program and has also found that some of the top polluted non-attainment cities in 2019 have marginally improved. Now, UPSC under the Environment section has asked questions related to the air quality and the various protocols that have been initiated for the same and such a question was seen in the year 2016 when UPSC asked about the air quality index. A practice question in this regard can be framed regarding the National Clean Air Program. The practice question here says consider the following statements regarding the National Clean Air Program. The first statement here is it was launched by Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change 
and this statement is correct as the program was launched in 2019 by the ministry of environment forest and climate change the various other ministries also partner with the ministry of environment forest and climate change for the initiative further the program was launched by the ministry of environment as a long term time bound and a national level strategy which was determined effort to deal with the air pollution problem across the country in a comprehensive manner moving on to the second statement it says the program covers all the cities across the country and this statement is incorrect under the national clean air program it has been envisaged to achieve the target of 20 to 30% reduction in the particulate matter concentration by the year 2024 but the ncap is implemented in 132 cities only and not all the cities so statement 2 here is incorrect moving on to the third statement it says international organization are also involved under the program now this statement is again correct as the international organizations have been engaged to provide technical assistance further during our discussion of the topic we have seen the mention of non attainment cities the national clean air program also covers non attainment cities wherein these cities are the cities where the national ambient air quality standard has been exceeded for a consecutive 5 years so this was extra information that can be utilized to frame a question the question for the says which of the following statement is or are correct and as only statement 1 and 3 are correct the correct code for the given question will be option d further the correct code for the previous year question is option b moving on to the next article of the day that has appeared in the explain section of the indian express basically talks about the delegated legislation the article mentions that the supreme court decision on 2016 demonetization and under which one of the key questions to decide for the supreme court was whether parliament gave excessive powers to center under the law to demonetize the currency and also mentions what basically is delegated legislation and the provisions related to the same and the relationship between the RBI and that of center now upsc under the polity section in the recent years have gone from asking static portion to dynamic nature of question under the polity section where in the year 2020 it asked between the agreement between gandhism and marxism so these types of question require a different level of analysis a practice question regarding the delegated legislation can be framed in this regard the practice question says consider the following statements regarding delegated legislation in india the first statement here is indian constitution provides explicitly about the delegated legislation now this statement is incorrect as indian constitution does not specifically mentions about delegated legislation but inference can be made from the implicit mention for example as under article 312 powers have been given to rajya sabha to create new all india services and delegate powers and function to it this brings us to another question that what is delegated legislation basically the legislator who are mps or mlas make laws in the skeleton form that is they are very broad and bureaucrats along with the union and the state government provide for the technical details under it under the delegated legislation parliament confers the law making power to the executive and delegated legislation is nothing but law enacted by authority other than the supreme authority in exercise of power that is it is granted to it by the supreme authority here the supreme authority is the parliament who is conferring power on the executive and this form is also known as subordinate legislation or delegated legislation moving on to the second statement it says essential legislative function are also delegated under it now this statement is incorrect though nothing in indian constitution prohibits legislator powers to delegate but there are two limitations that have been imposed as per the judgment made by the supreme court the first limitation is that legislature cannot delegate essential legislative functions to another body and the second limitation is power conferred on the subordinate authority should not suffer from excessive delegation the idea behind the two limitation is that that the body that is making rules and regulations that is the body which has got the delegated power has no inherent power of its own and derive the power from the statute the question for the says which of the following statement is 
or are correct and as none of the statement given above is correct the correct code for the given question will be option d further the correct code for the previous year question is option a moving on to the next article of the day that has featured in the hindu basically talks about the g7 grouping as the group of seven coalition had decided to set two price caps on russian refined products in february and basically talks about the coalition that is the g7 now upsc under the international section has continuously asked questions related to various grouping and such a question was also seen in the year 2020 when upsc asked about the group of 20 so g7 becomes important from the perspective of prelims for us the practice question in this regard says with reference to g7 consider the following statement the first statement here is it is an informal forum of industrialization for discussing and coordinating solutions to major global issues now this statement is correct as g7 is an informal forum of leading industrialized nation which includes canada france germany italy japan uk and us further the representatives of the european union are always present at the annual meeting of the heads of the states g7 moving on to the second statement it says it is not based on a treaty and has no permanent secretariat or office now this statement is again correct the first world economic summit which was held in 1975 which later became the g7 was the brain child of french president the g7 is further not based on a treaty and has no permanent secretariat or office it is organized through a presidency that rotates that rotates annually among the member states with the presiding state setting the group's priorities and hosting and organizing its summit currently the germany presides the g20 currently the germany presides the g7 moving on to the third statement it says it has launched global shield plan to provide funding to countries suffering climate disasters now this statement is again correct the g7 led plan dubbed as global shield to provide funding to countries that are suffering from climate disasters was launched at the UN COP27 summit it was coordinated by the G7 and also the V20 group that is the climate vulnerable countries and aims to rapidly provide pre-arranged insurance and disaster protection funding after events such as flood droughts and hurricane the question for this is which of the statement given above is or are correct and as all the statement given above are correct the correct code for the given question will be option d further the correct code for the previous year question is option a moving on to the next question of the day it basically talks about the supply chain leaders who see a grim 2023 on the counts of recession and inflation now upsc under the economic section has continuously asked questions related to various economic terminology like that of recession inflation and the measures that are adopted to counter them or brace them and a question regarding the definition can be framed in this regard as in 2021 upsc asked about the steps to be taken during the time of an economic recession a practice question in this regard says which of the following given statement clearly indicates the term economic recession through this question we will try to understand what basically economic recession is what is depression what is stagflation etc The first statement given here is a steep and sustained drop in economic activity featuring high unemployment and negative GDP growth. Now this is not a definition of economic recession. Rather this is a definition of depression which is characterized by features like high unemployment rate and negative GDP growth. Moving on to the second statement says simultaneous fall in employment levels along with very high inflationary pressure on the economy represents economic recession but this statement is also incorrect as this is a case of best explained by stagflation as under the stagflation there is a simultaneous fall in employment levels along with high inflationary pressure on the economy Moving on to the third statement it says it is a fall in the gdp growth due to tight monetary policy and contractionary fiscal policy now this statement is again incorrect basically it represents a routine monetary and fiscal policies which is used to control the activities it shows the cause for recession but does not define the recession 
Moving on to the fourth statement, it says it is a phase of two successive quarterly negative declines in the GDP growth, and this closely aligns with the definition of economic recession. Thus, the correct option for the given question, which closely indicates situation of economic recession, is option D. Further, the answer for the previous year question is option B. Moving on to the last article of the day, though the article is political in news. but we have to analyze the issue that is important for us that is the golden temple as upsc under the art and culture section has previously also asked questions related to various temples that are present in india and such a question was also seen in the year 2022 only where upsc has asked about the somnath temple a question regarding the golden temple can be made in this order the statement one here says guru ramdas The fourth guru designed the architecture of the temple. This statement is incorrect as it was Guru Arjan Dev, the fifth Nanak, who conceived the idea of creating a central place of worship for the six and he himself designed the architecture of Sri Harmandir Sahib or the Golden Temple and was built for the first time in the year 1604. Moving on to the second statement, it says the excavation of holy pond that is the Amrit Sarovar was done by guru arjan dev now this statement is incorrect because earlier the planning to excavate the holy tank was chalked out by guru amar das but it was executed by guru ram das and not guru arjan dev moving on to the third statement it says temple was rebuilt in marble and copper overlaid with gold foil during the reign of maharaja ranjit singh now this statement is correct as the temple was destroyed by several time by the afghan invaders it was finally rebuilt in marble and copper and overlaid with the gold foil during the reign of maharaja ranjit singh the question for the says which of the statement given above is or are correct and as only third statement is correct the correct code for the given question will be option c further the correct code for the previous year question is option a